In this video, we are going to implement the health bar for our player, so it will decrease when we get hit. And we are going to implement the shoot indicator, so we know how long do we have to wait before we can perform another shot. Okay, let's get going. This video is part of the series of videos about creating a 2D top-down tank game. We will explore different features of this game, each as a standalone video. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In the previous video, we have added track marks to our tanks as well as the engine sound, so if we speed up, the sound will be a bit louder, if we slow down, the sound will be a bit quieter, so that we have now some feedback to our movement mechanic. And we have of course implemented the UI for the health of our enemies, but now it would be a good idea to implement the UI for our player. Okay, so first thing I want to implement is the health bar for our player, so we know how much health does our tank has. And I want to implement this uh, shooting delay indicator, so that we know how long do we have to wait before we can shoot another bullet. So first thing I want to implement is the health UI for our player, since this will be very similar to the health bar for our enemies that we have implemented a few episodes ago. So what I would like to create is a canvas for our whole game for our whole scene so i will right click create ui and i will select the canvas and this will be our main canvas and this has some options here in the inspector so if we create for example some sort of a panel here in our scene so i will select the ui tool and i will move it like this and now if i change the resolution of our game you can see that the panel got a bit larger than it was previously when i have selected 1080p so if I go to our canvas, and sorry, not canvas, but canvas scaler, and select the UI scale mode, and I select constant pixel size, it will keep the same size of our panel throughout the different resolutions. So instead, what I want to have is the UI scale mode set to be scale with screen size. And now our panel is gone, so let me reset it. I'm going to select the anchor point, and I'm going to hold shift and alt and set it to fill in the whole space. And I'm going to hold Alt and Shift to decrease its size. And now it is the same as it was before. So now what I want to do is change the resolution to 4K, for example. And you can see that despite the change in resolution, the panel stays the same. So it was scaled according to the resolution to what we have preset. Okay, so this was one important change to our canvas. And you may want to change the reference resolution to what the resolution you meant the game to be played. Let's set it to be 1920 by 1080. Okay. And now if you set the panel to whatever size it will, you want it to be, it will stay the same way. Great. Now, do mind uh, that there is also the graphic raycaster, which basically allows us to interact with our UI. So it will detect the clicks of our player on the UI. For now, that's it with the changes with our canvas. Let's go back to our panel. Now, this is a health panel, so I will want to place a bigger panel at the bottom of my, our screen. So I will select our panel, I will select the anchor and hold the shift to preset the pivot and alt to set the position. So hold alt and shift and set it to be the bottom of the screen. So here is where I want our panel to be anchored. Now I'm going to decrease it and you can see that now if I hold Alt and Shift it is decreasing and the pivot point is at the bottom of the screen. Okay, and I, was, I think I want to have it something like this for our health bar, maybe something smaller, I'm not sure yet. Now, for the health panel, we are going to select an image and we are going to find an image in our Kenny Assets UI pack. I'm going to select the PNG and I'm going to search for the yellow panel. There, it should be somewhere at the bottom. And if we select the sprite editor, you can see that we have it sliced. So we have those green handles that are at the edges of our sprite dragged somewhere that it distinguish where is the border of our panel and where is the main uh, area where the other UI elements will be at. So for example, this border will only be scaled on the x-axis and this one only on y-axis and the corners will never be scaled so this will preserve the same look of our panel despite the panel being enlarged okay so make sure you have those settings on each side and i'm going to close the sprite editor 
And what I will need to do is select our panel. I'm going to rename it to the uh, to be called health panel. And I'm going to drag our yellow panel as the image of it. And I will change the color to be full alpha so that we can see this yellow panel at the bottom of our screen. Okay, I think this is good enough. Now in here, I want to have a text that will allow us to give some information of what is uh, this panel as well as the health itself. So I will add a text component. So I'll right click UI and text and I will add a, another panel UI and panel. And as you can see, those are strangely placed in our health panel. So to control how our children of the health panel are placed, we are going to select our health panel add and we are going to search for horizontal and there should be horizontal layout group and as you can see now our text and our panel are being placed horizontally now i want to set our horizontal layout group settings so first of all child alignment i want it to, to start in the middle center so our text and our panel will be in the middle center of our yellow panel and what we can do is we can uncheck the force expand width okay now we have the text and the panel close together now the panel has width and height of zero so let's set it to be 100 by 100 and now you can see it more clearly we have the text and we have our panel now for the text let's select it and we have the text component i will select the font and we should have this can vector font and uh let's say uh, let's see i want this future thin one okay so now it is much better i want to set the font size to be something like 53 and the text is gone so this means we need to enlarge it a bit so that we can see our text and i'm going to call it health and colon and this will be our text it will be static so we can decrease the size of it and we can uh, do one more thing in the text component we have the paragraph alignment so we can place it in the middle of our text component so now it is looking pretty nice next we want to set up our health panel that will show our red bar about uh, informing us about our health status so for our image of our panel and this will be called let's call it health bar we are going to again select an image from our Kenny assets okay so for our image we are going to again go to our kenny ui pack png and we are going to search for the gray panel and we are going to place it okay and again the gray panel also has set the slicing for it and if you go to our image of our health bar the setting here will be image type sliced automatically set because we have sliced the sprite in our setting if you slice it after setting it uh, as the image for our health bar you may want to go to the image type and set it to be sliced okay i'm going to set it to be black and i'm going to set alpha to full opacity so that we can see our background for our health bar i will decrease the size of it having the rect tool selected in the scene view i'm going to hold the alt and i'm going to decrease the size of it and i'm going to increase increase the size of the uh, length of our panel okay and i can now select our health panel the yellow box and i can decrease it okay now this will be our health bar okay now the positions of our text and health bar are controlled by our horizontal layout group so all we need to do is anchor the health panel somewhere in our scene so we have anchored it to the bottom of our screen and those uh, elements of the health panel will stay anchored correctly because they are driven through the uh, horizontal layout group now all we need to do is add the red uh, field here so what i will want to do is select our health bar and i will right click select ui and add another panel and i'm going to call it health field panel okay i want to select our uh, anchor and it should be set to be stretched great and i may want to disable this image so we do not have the image here and inside it i want to create another panel so select uh, right click ui and select panel and let's call it health fill okay and again we are going to select for it uh, from the can ui pack folder the red panel let's find it here it is 
and I'm going to select the color, color red, alpha full, and this will be our health bar. Now to make it look a bit prettier so that we can see actually the outline of our black health bar panel, I'm going to add to the health field panel a horizontal layout group. And now what I will want to do is select control child width so that we can control the width of our fill panel as well as I will select the child alignment to be middle center and I will expand the padding and set the padding to be 5, 5, 5, 5, okay. And now let's select our health fill and the height is 0. So I will want to select our uh, health fill panel and also control the child height. And now we can see that our health fill has appeared and it has this black border around it. Okay, with our initial setup done, let's now go to our health bar and let's add a slider component. And this will be exactly the same setup as we did with our enemy. So for our health bar, we have our slider. We are going to disable the interactivity because we do not want to interact with it. And you can see that now it has become a bit gray, the dark color uh, behind it. So this is because the transition is set to color tint. We are going to set it to be none and navigation to be none. Now we need to select the fill and handle rect. Now handle rect will be none, but uh, fill rect will be our health fill panel. And now it should disappear because now we have this value, float value, and we are controlling the health bar using this value. And all we need to do is select our tank component of our player. So let's go to our player tank and we should have our damageable script and it has on uh, the on health change event. And we need to add our health bar as the object for uh, the listener. And we are going to select the function slider and value. Now let's set our health to something smaller. So maybe 50 or maybe uh, 20. And if we press play, we should now see that our health bar will interact with the enemy bullets. Let's get hit and you can see that it has decreased. So that's great. Now it means that our health bar is working. Okay, so let's stop it. Next thing that I want to implement is the uh, indicator of our shooting mechanic so that we know how long we will need to wait before we can shoot another bullet. So we could possibly copy the canvas element from our static enemy, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's create it anew. So let's select our player. We're going to right click, select the UI and add a canvas component. And again, we want to set now the canvas render mode to not be screen space overlay, but rather the world space. And now we want to set the position in direct transform of it to be zero, 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 zero. Now, if we select it using F, we will see that it has uh, appeared somewhere in our scene. Uh, it is on the on our player. Now we want to remove the canvas scaler from our UI of our from our canvas of our player and the graphic raycaster as well. Remove component. Now for the uh, canvas, we may want to set the camera so the camera which the events are triggered through. But since we are not going to interact with it, it is not that important. What is important is to set the sorting layer. And we have UI layer uh, that is rendered on top of everything else. Great. And this should be it for our canvas. Now we have a script called uh, follow UI follow tank. Let me show you the script that we have created in the previous video. A UI follow tank is a simple script that gets the transform object to follow and rect transform rect transform. It accesses the rect transform of, the, of this object so of this canvas object and when we are calling the update if the object to follow is not null we're going to simply set the anchored position of our rect transform to be equal to object to follow that local position so this will basically make our ui our canvas follow our player around great now what is left is to create our indicator for the shooting mechanic so we are going to right click on our canvas ui and let's select add panel and we are going to call it a reload slider. Okay, we're going to remove the image from it. And now what we will want to do is again create some kind of setup for our slider. Uh, this, case, this time we will want to right click 
feed on our in our sl reload slider an image and you can see that it is pretty large image so for now let's leave it like this we are going to select our reload slider so what we will want to do is first of all we are going to go to our png of our kenny ui pack and we are going to select our red circle we should have it here okay let's add it as a source for our image and uncheck the raycast target and in the image type we are going to select field and now this will make our image field and we can un unfill it depending on the fill amount that we give it great now what we may want to do is change the fill origin to be top so now it will uh, fill a bit differently okay and we may want to make it anti-clockwise so now it is filled a bit different and when we start uh, decreasing the fill amount, it will go like a clock and it will be gone at, uh, as we reach zero. Great! This will be our shoot indicator, but again, this is a bit too big. So let's add to our reload slider a slider component. Okay, and again, we are going to disable the transitions and the navigation to set to none. And we are going to select now our image as the fill rect. Now what we want to do is select our reload slider, select our anchor, and I'm going to call shift and alt, and I'm going to select this middle point. And I'm going to select image, select anchored, and alt and shift, and I'm going to select the fill. So now, it, the image is using the scale of our reload slider. So if we increase the value, now there is no slider for our reload slider, we can change the width to be 0.5 and height to be 0.5 of our reload slider and now we can see our reload slider appearing in our scene let's use the move tool and drag it a bit higher above our tank and we can decrease the image the color of the alpha value so that it is a bit transparent but still visible great so now we have our ui for the reload slider now all we need is to connect it to our tank now, if we go to our tank and open it up, we have our tank turret parent, tank turret, and it has the turret script. And our turret script has the on reloading event. Let me show you what it does. Okay, we are in the turret script, and our on reloading event that we have implemented a while ago is simply sending a value of current delay which is the current delay that we need to wait before we can give we can shoot another bullet and on reloading is being updated in the update method so when we calculate the current delay we are calling on reloading question mark dot to check if anybody is listening to this event invoke and we pass the current delay and what we may want to ensure because we are setting it in the shot to be third data dot reload delay we may want to ensure that we divide the current delay by the turret data dot reload delay so the maximum delay so that we have a value between 0 and 1 here okay let's save it let's go back to unity so again having the tank turret selected we can add the to the event on reloading our reload slider as the object and the function will be our slider and value and now last thing that we will want to do is select our canvas and I think we haven't set the object to follow so let's select our tank as the object. So let's try pressing play, let's see how it works. If we uh, perform a shot it will start circling and it will start uh, decreasing the fill value and only when it reaches zero we can shoot again and if we drive forward and shoot again it will be following our tank. Great! So now we have our health bar as well as our shooting indicator and now we have a bit more information about our game of course you can modify the ui because it is a pretty big compared to our tanks or you can change the parameters of the camera but basically that is the way we would implement those two ui elements for our player great i hope you have enjoyed this video if you want to support me please take a look at my patreon website check out my udemy course about creating a 2d top-down shooter using the URP and UNT 2020. There will be a link with a discount in the description if you are interested. Leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.